You know, I'm old enough to remember a time when Republicans at least pretended to actually be in favor of states' rights, but now they don't even try to maintain the facade. You know, it's full mask off. They're hypocrites. They're, you know, electoral opportunists. And if there's a states' rights issue at stake that doesn't help them, then they don't care. They'll show their colors, their true colors immediately. Um, but this is what we've come to expect from the Republican Party. So when it comes to states' rights and voting, you know, I don't know if you all know about this, but we're currently in a pandemic and we have a major election coming up in November. So assuming that the pandemic persists until that time, voters have to be given some alternative. They can't be forced to risk their lives to come out and vote in a pandemic. So of course, I think that mail-in voting is a no-brainer. We do it in Oregon. It's been this way for decades. Everyone here loves it, Republicans and Democrats. But California Governor Gavin Newsom has chosen to institute vote by mail, and the Republican Party is suing him. You heard that right. They are suing him for choosing to do vote by mail during a pandemic. I mean, never mind that this should be the norm, even if we're not living through a pandemic, but the fact that they're suing him for instituting vote by mail during a pandemic adds to the absurdity of this story. So as William Cummings of USA Today reports, the Republican Party launched a legal battle to block California Governor Gavin Newsom from sending all voters in his state mail-in ballots for the general election, arguing the move is unconstitutional and invites voter fraud. The Republican National Committee, National Republican Congressional Committee, and California Republican Party filed a lawsuit Sunday against Newsom and Secretary of State Alex Padilla in the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of California. In their complaint, the groups called the Democratic governor's action an illegal usurpation of the legislature's authority to set the time, place, and manner of the election, which they said constitutionally rests with the state legislature. This brazen power grab was not authorized by state law and violates both the elections clause and electors clause of the U.S. Constitution, the complaint says. On May 8th, Newsom signed an executive order stating that every registered California voter would be sent a mail-in ballot because of concerns about the spread of coronavirus. Elections and the right to vote are foundational to our democracy, Newsom said in a statement. No Californian should be forced to risk their health in order to exercise their right to vote. So, I mean, there's so much to say about this, but let's just pause for a moment and think about the Republican Party and what they view is, you know, an abuse of power or a power grab, whatever language they used. They're perfectly fine with voter ID laws. They're perfectly fine with restricting the number of polling places in precincts. They're perfectly fine with legally questionable voter purges in states like Georgia and elsewhere. But when it comes to a governor signing an executive order that allows citizens to vote by mail during a pandemic, that's where they draw the line. That's an unconstitutional power grab. And understand, they don't have much of a leg to stand on here because they constantly cry voter fraud. Trump does the same thing, but they can never prove it. They never present you with evidence. And that's because there is no evidence that vote by mail invites mass voter fraud, which is why they use language like it invites voter fraud because they can't actually prove that it is conducive to voter fraud. If you go to the Heritage Foundation's uh, election fraud website, you can look at each state and they basically will uh, catalog all of the instances of voter fraud. Go to Oregon and there's less than 13 over the last 20 years. So clearly they can't prove that this will lead to voter fraud, which is why they have to fear monger and say, oh, you know, it'll invite voter fraud. We're not saying definitely, but it just opens the door to voter fraud more so than machines? How? They don't have an argument. And understand that they're basically trying to get him on a technicality. This is a very, you know, Democrat tactic. They're trying to say, well, you didn't fill out the proper paperwork. You know, you did this via executive action, whereas if you did this via the legislature and got it passed that way, then we'd be okay with it. We're not against vote by mail because that would encourage more people to vote, which means we'd probably lose. We're against it because you didn't do it properly. You signed an executive order and we're against that. We're against power grabs. I mean, they're clowns. They're absolute clowns. Let's be very real about the intentions of the RNC and the Republican Party. Here's the thing. If more people turn out to vote, that hurts them every single time because the Republican Party is a minority party. 
Most people, the overwhelming majority of Americans, do not identify with the Republican Party. So they know the only way that they can get power and maintain power is by disenfranchising thousands and thousands of voters. And, of course, a form of voter suppression is forcing people to vote during a pandemic. And if more people have an option to vote, then um, that means that they they may not be as successful. They don't care that, you know, they're win winning illegitimately. They just care that they win. And make no mistake about it, this isn't just about California, because I think that they realize California is a deep blue state, and to them it's a lost cause. But they don't want the popularity of mail-in voting to catch on, because if it does... And if every single state had vote by mail, if we had nationwide vote by mail, could you imagine? More people would vote. And when turnout is higher, Republicans lose. This is uh, a fact of reality. Every single election, we can basically, if we knew how many people would turn out to vote, you could predict with a relative degree of certainty which party would win and take power. So the Republican Party always tries to concern troll as a way of disenfranchising voters, right? They say we need voter ID laws to, you know, diminish the prospect of fraud. We need to make sure that we don't do mail-in voting because that could lead to people committing fraud when in actuality, what's the outcome of these policies that they implement? I mean, look at voter ID laws. These disproportionately affect black and brown voters. So, you know, if they're going to disenfranchise voters, at least stop with the facade, stop with this, you know, pretense that you actually care about, you know, integrity at the vote. Because that's not what you care about. You care about winning. And so if you can disenfranchise Democratic Party voters and get them to not turn out for Democrats, then this means you would win. It's the only way a minority party is able to keep being successful, aside from the fact that, you know, the opposition party Democrats suck and people don't want to turn out anyway. But if more people turn out, Republicans lose. So, I mean, this is just, it's a despicable move, right? And if I were Gavin Newsom currently, not knowing how this is going to pan out, I would encourage, you know, Democrats in their state legislature to pass this law and, you know, codify it, send it to his desk. Because I think that, you know, signing an executive order is an important measure to take, you know, um, but you also have to make sure that you make this a law so it's permanent, so it can't be challenged. I mean, that doesn't necessarily mean that it can't be challenged. That's not to say that Republicans still wouldn't challenge it. But as many arguments from them as you could debunk, that's going to help, you know, bolster your case because mail-in voting is incredibly important. And regardless of what Donald Trump and Republicans say, they're lying. They're absolutely full of shit when they say that this leads to voter fraud because that is demonstrably untrue. And if they actually cared about voter fraud, they can have uh, policies enacted to where they audit the votes at every single precinct. At every election, have a recount just automatically be triggered um, if an election is within two points, right? If, if it's a close race. There are things you can do to minimize voter fraud, but it's not that big of an issue. They try to make it a big issue, and, you know, right-wing media sensationalizes this issue because they want to suppress the vote. And, you know, uh, claiming that there are widespread instances of voter fraud across the country, that's just the justification that they use to try to disenfranchise voters. Don't fall for their bullshit and fight them because voting is a right. And once you lose that right in a democracy, then you no longer live in a democracy. You can argue about how much impact your vote has, but if you lose the right to vote, if there are more obstacles that keep you from voting, you no longer live in a democracy. And you can already make the case that we don't live in a democracy. I would argue that we don't live in a democracy or we don't meet the criteria of polyarchy. But the right to vote is essential. Don't let Donald Trump lie to you. Don't let the Republican Party lie to you. They are full of shit. They don't care about voter fraud. If they actually were concerned with it, they wouldn't be pushing voter ID laws or stopping people from voting by mail. Because again, it works in Oregon. We've had it here for decades. And Republicans and Democrats here love it. And if you try to take it away from us, uh, you're going to have a, a pretty hard time doing that, right? Even Republicans here absolutely love vote by mail. So um, this is just a tactic. It's a ploy for them to gaslight you into thinking that voter fraud is a bigger issue than it is so they can disenfranchise you. Don't let them and fight them. Mike is the worst progressive on YouTube. Please don't subscribe to him or become a patron. 
David Dole is so much better. Trust me, folks. He's doing a great job. He really is. Okay? <laughs>